Rich Gonzalez, along with Jason Eichelberger here in Clovis, California for the 2019 CIF State Meet, the 101st annual CIF State Track and Field Championships. It should be another good one again this year. A couple of the big things to watch out for on Friday, it is always about qualifying, avoiding disaster, and if you're one of those individuals lucky enough to be in a great team, it's also about setting the stage for a day two team championship. I want to start off first on the boys' side, and then Jason will pitch in with the girls. On the boys' side, things to look out for, we have three teams in the running for the title, Long Beach Poly, Upland, and Clovis North. And they all have very different paths in day one that will be key. For Clovis North, Caleb Foster, the outstanding junior, is going to be involved in four events this weekend. And he's need to come through big in all four of them if Clovis North is going to win that team title tomorrow. So that's the first thing is eight events for him over two days. Long Beach Poly, a little bit different. They have eight different entries forecast to score this weekend. Day one, they don't have any big, big guns that are expected to win an event individually. They just need to make sure that all those kids get through scoring-wise to basically get in position. And then we've got Upland. They, I think, have the easiest day one task because just two athletes in two events apiece, and they're so good, they should have no problem getting through. Uh, before we go on to some of the individuals, Jason, your thoughts first opening up on the girls' side. You know, I think the big thing to watch out for today is uh, the health of actually two of our state title favorites. Um, we have in the 100 meters and the 200 meters, we have Deanna Nally of Calabasas. Been battling a little bit of a leg injury there, so we want to kind of see what her health is heading into the finals. Um, and then we'll go to the throws events where we have Jocelyn Budwig. Um, obviously, it's not ideal for a thrower to have a leg injury. She comes in with a little bit of a hamstring injury. She's the defending state champion in the shot put, and obviously that's an event where you kind of need those legs to be healthy. So it'll be really key to see how she's feeling today leading into tomorrow. Definitely. Also, individually on the boys' side, one of the key events, even though they're not in the same heat in prelims, is going to be the boys' high hurdles. The reason being, the top two hunters in the country are in this meet this weekend. First off, we've got Jamar Marshall, the outstanding junior from St. Mary's of Stockton, and then we also have Warren Williams of Merrill West of Tracy. Marshall number one in the country, 1351 win legal, Williams 1355. This will be the 12th time <laughs> this year they are going head to head in a race. Jamar, uh, I'm sorry, Warren Williams won the first three, and since then Jamar's won seven of the last eight. So if all goes well today, they'll face each other again tomorrow for all the marbles and. Should I say, Caleb Foster is also could probably be in that race, <laughs> yeah, and I would not him. rule that kid out. That kid is special. <laughs> Anything next up? No, you know, it, it's interesting that you mentioned that. I mean, you don't really see that too often. Two guys <laughs> that good on that quality of level racing against each other 12 times? Yeah, amazing. amazing, amazing. Okay, uh, a couple things real quick. Wrap, wrapping up on the boys' side. First off, in terms of something to watch out for in day one, individually, performance-based. I would say Keenan Christian, the outstanding hurdler from down in San Diego, Madison High School. The reason being, right now he is on fire, and there's a chance this weekend, whether it be today or tomorrow, we could have a state record fall in one of his events. But most likely, if any, would be in the 100 meter dash. Record currently is 1030 by another former San Diego athlete, Riley Washington, out of Southwest High School, did back in 1992. The 200 mark. Uh, 2030 by Michael Norman might be a little bit tougher to crack. <laughs> Michael um, Norman, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Closing thoughts on the girls? Uh, you know, I'm actually looking forward to seeing, we have a couple of standout freshmen this year. Uh, in the long jump, Kaylin Harris of Upland. Uh, obviously, phenomenal, phenomenal talent. Last week, 20 feet, 5 inches, 5 and a quarter inches, uh, 5 and a quarter inches. Um, the number three mark of anyone under 18 in the world so far this year. Um, you kind of want to see what that will be like on the state meet level. She shouldn't have a problem in prelims, but this is the biggest stage in California, so you want to see how she will perform there. Also, the girls 400, another freshman, another talented freshman, Long Beach, will, Long Beach Milliken, excuse me, freshman, Samara Monroy, state leader in the 400. The girl has run with a poise and a confidence that's a little bit above her years. Will that continue the pressure of the state meet? We'll see. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Harris is a phenomenal talent in the long jump. Monroy, she's still coming into her own early on, so I'm really curious to see how she does. One thing I also to keep an eye on this weekend, I don't know if you really want to keep an eye on it, but just be aware of it. If there's an event that seems to go on forever and ever and ever, <laughs> that'll be the boys' high jump. Total of 43 entrants in that event. There's a story behind that. We'll be tweeting out the details during the course of the meet on Friday, so tune in for that. Make sure you follow us at Prep Caltrack, uh, at Jason Eichelberger, and we'll go ahead and go from there. 
Any other things to add on? Uh, you know, in the girls' team battle, a name for everyone to kind of keep an eye on will be uh, Calabasas sophomore Jay McDonald. She's entered in three different events, 100-meter hurdles, she's entered in the long jump and the triple jump. If Calabasas, who was the overwhelming state title favorite in the team battle before some disqualifications kind of sullied the picture a little bit, if she's able to get through in those three events, along with Nowling, if she's healthy, that still gives Calabasas an opportunity to compete for the state championship in terms of the team battle. So it'll be interesting to kind of watch her today, see how she does and how that could set them up to potentially challenge with Buchanan and maybe a couple others in that team title mix. Okay, so once again, make sure you shine. Follow us on social media. We'll be back later on this evening with go ahead and pictures, highlights, and videos from today's action day one of the CF State Track and Field Championships.